it bothers me so much to see companies out there that are taking advantage of people or, mm -hmm. you know, preying on their hopes and dreams. I mean, I have never, ever told anybody that this was easy uh, as being a voice actor. And I've never told them that it was fast. I've always said that, you know, it's a crockpot career. It's not a microwave meal. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. This is the second part of my interview with Dan Friedman. Getting away from voiceovers and back into sort of public speaking, though, are there ways that you help people improve their voice that they would be able to use? Um, you know, I'm, are there actionable tips you'd give a person right now who's listening that, that has to maybe give a presentation that they're a little nervous about? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Breathing. It always starts with breathing. And I know that that's really boring. <laughs> And everybody's but essential. We uh, all have to breathe. But, but essential. <laughs> uh, and I know diaphragmatic breathing is the big term, but it, but it is for real. Having breath support is just so important. So think about breathing through your nose and into your belly and letting your belly expand and not into your chest. And there's two a couple of important reasons for this. When you take that breath in through your nose and direct it down towards your diaphragm or your belly and your belly expands. Before we get there, just one, one question. Why your nose? Yes, uh, because your breathing in through your nose moisturizes the air as it passes your vocal cords. Okay. So this way your vocal cords remain more moist and ready to work. Because if you take, that's the first thing. The second thing is by taking a breath in through the nose and being conscious of it going into your belly is that you start in a much better position in general to speak because your shoulders did not come up. Because when you take a breath in through your mouth, your shoulders go back and your chest comes up. And then a lot of people don't let all that air out, or if they do, their shoulders never go back with it. Okay. And when your shoulders are up and back, you're tense. Mm -hmm. So that's no way to start a conversation because everything I say, when my you can probably hear it in my voice right now, my shoulders are back and up, right? And that's mm -hmm. a yep. way bit different from when I just dropped my shoulders and everything. I didn't really change anything else. I just dropped my shoulders. So taking in that breath through the nose, really puts you in a good position to start off strong. That's great, yeah. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, especially if you have a dialect uh, or uh, an accent uh, that is bothering you, think about dropping your jaw more. Just lower your jaw more. By doing that, you'll those vowels will start to loosen up a little bit. Uh, you might say, in the, in the way that you probably say them now. So think about dropping your jaw more. That's an interesting tip. One I've never heard before either. <laughs> yeah, but it really works. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really works. It's, it's kind of amazing. And then, of course, I have all, you know, we have a whole host of warm-up exercises and things that oh, we course. do too, which is really important to warm up your voice uh, and get it ready for the day. Mm -hmm. And that's for singing and, and, and anytime you're going to be performing. I would also say, I'll give you a third tip too. Hydra sure. Hydration. Ah, yes. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. And, and not really the day of, but more so the day before. So if you, oh, ha really? okay. if you mm -hmm. have a big performance, something that's going on, make sure you're well hyd hydrated the day before. Okay. I find personally, and I don't know, I honestly don't know if there's science behind that. And of course, <laughs> you're going to drink, you know, water as you should on the day of the performance. Mm -hmm. But I say also make sure you're well hydrated the day before. That way, it'll, you know, when you 
put water on top of it the day of, you're already well hydrated. So that water is, you know, I mean, you need half a gallon of water a day in order to keep your vocal cords moist. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's really uh, interesting that you'd say the day before. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, mm -hmm. it's, it makes me think of my dog a little bit because my dog is like a camel. He drinks okay. like he drinks like all his water at once. <laughs> it seems like I mean, uh -huh. and then he, you know, and then he runs around for like hours, and then you know he goes back to the water bowl and drinks like all. Of it. It's it's crazy. It's hilarious. My dog is, <laughs> my dog's name is Eddie Van Howlin. I love it. Okay, and yeah, I, and I love this dog. My dog. What kind of dog is he? He's actually a, a mix of uh, hounds. Uh, okay, he is a, a red bone coon hound. About twenty nine percent. Wow. Twenty three percent plot hound, which is the state dog of North Carolina. Okay. And then like four other things, but the next biggest is Australian Shepherd, which is what his mom was. Oh, okay. Just a uh, he's a great, great dog. <laughs> he's so obedient and uh, sweet, kind, na sweet natured dog. He's just fantastic, and I love him, but. He is. He's like a camel. He drinks all his water at once <laughs> uh, and makes a big mess and then, you know, runs around for hours. So that's really the point of this story. Hydrate. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Well, but dogs know, I guess, kind of by instinct what they should be doing for their own bodies. Yeah, I would so, say so. Yeah. So if he's able to hydrate in one big shot and then run around for hours and then yes. go back and do it in one big shot, that must be best for him. <laughs> I, I, exactly. And it's funny because we really don't pay attention to our bodies much as humans a lot of times yeah. uh, until you become an actor. I, in the years that I went to acting school, I became very aware of my body, uh, which because I, I did a little on camera thing for a short little while uh, and I discovered that I'm terrible at being on camera uh, <laughs> because I move around too much. Uh huh. OK. Uh, well, perfect for voiceovers. <laughs> that is exactly right. It's it's expressive. This is an expressive job. Uh, so it doesn't really work so well on camera, but it works really well in voiceover. Yeah, definitely. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes, for both of us. Right. I never wanted to be in front of a camera either. So. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. I actually got cast in a TV pilot uh, several years ago. That... I remember seeing that, actually. I don't remember what happened with it, though. Did anything? Oh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, that's too bad, though. It well, looked promising. It was super fun. And the interesting thing about it, I think, like with all of these uh, things that come up in life is uh, it was it was a crazy opportunity. It was super fun to do. I learned a lot just from having that experience. And it also pushed me into acting school because I realized very quickly, just like I think I did way back in the days of sound where I had started doing it before I actually knew what I was doing. I felt very much the same way with on camera. It was, uh, I'm doing this, but I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So I want to make sure like, can I go and learn the nuances of this so I can be better at it and really make everybody else's life easier too. And that has always been kind of the focus of my training and working with voice actors as well, is that a voice actor is the highest paid person in the room, usually for the time that they are there. You know, you might be in there with other writers, sound mm -hmm. engineers, people like that. Not always the CEO, but yeah. ad agency people and things like that. And even still for the, you know, let's say you do a spot that's, you know, you get paid $5,000 and you were in there for 30 minutes. I mean, that's a huge responsibility in my mind is that oh, sure. as the talent, you actually have to be the talent and make sure that what you're doing isn't wasting anybody's time. Mm -hmm. You are contributing, you're helping everybody else do their jobs and make them look great by being good at what you do and making it easy on everybody. So usually I have two goals in, in, in a session is to do the best job that I can and get everybody out to lunch early. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
because they all love a, that. a worthy goal. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They, they all love that. Yeah. Um, but this on camera thing, you know, it, it happened and it did. It pushed me into acting school and I learned a lot uh, there about, uh, gosh, just so many different things. It was it was just a great experience. And I it may ultimately it really has just all these experiences have just made me a better coach and a better director because that really is what I love. I love teaching people. I really do. Over all these mm -hmm. years, working with other people, hearing them transform right before my ears and their ears is it's just an incredible feeling. It's more rewarding than just about anything else that I, I could do at this point. Because sure. all this other, I've done a lot of other stuff that has been yeah. incredible. I mean, I've had. Now you get to have help other people do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's, uh, you know, I, I always say I'm old, but <laughs> I, 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 I guess I'm not that old, but I'm old enough that I can certainly help teach a new generation how to be the best that they can be at this and help communicate more effectively because we really are losing a lot of that in our society. Mm, so true. Not just with. Uh, the inability to to necessarily speak, but the fact that we are all potentially communicators. We're all potentially communicators because we're all speaking on camera at this point. Uh, certainly this next generation of kids will be very familiar with that. Oh, yeah. Um, so we want to be able to communicate effectively. We don't want to sound like robots. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting uh, everything across and that people want to listen to us so, because we have important things to say. And we're losing a lot of that because our the, the uh, younger generation's attention spans are less. They're communicating far more on text and nuance is getting lost and they may not even understand nuance. So these are all things that we want to get people better at. I know that we're all dealing with a lot of stuff these days, so I particularly wanted to acknowledge those that have taken the time to leave honest reviews of this podcast. Andy Wong has this to say, While business owners are likely familiar with branding and marketing, how often does one think of audio or sonic branding? Think about the power of a jingle or the mood of a song. It's important because sound can elicit an emotional response for more powerful marketing. Jody is a great guide exploring this topic and interviewing expert guests. As a voiceover professional, Jody's voice is also soothing while you learn. Excellent podcast. Thanks so much, Andy. Your Inspired Money podcast is, well, inspired. So I know you know a thing or two about putting a podcast together, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to write a review. And now, back to the show. Along those lines, what are some specific success stories that you've had with some of your clients? I'd love to hear about them. Sure, absolutely. I have, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I hope he's getting residuals, but I had a client, just one of my students the other day, uh, I was on Hulu and I heard one of his national spots come on the come on the television. And oh, that, good for him. Yeah. And that was actually, it was, it was about two or three years ago when I, and he initially had it out. So therefore it's running again. So good for him. Wow. We yeah, all, that's pretty long for that's something right. like that to run. That's right. We always love that. Um, cause that's mailbox money. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> So there's that. I, I'm actually working with another student right now who is not interested in voiceover at all. He is, mm -hmm. he writes his company's narrations and video, instructional videos and promotional videos. He's the voice and the whole thing. He writes them and does the voicing with that. So he's really enjoying, he's got a bit of a Texas drawl to him uh he's really enjoying the lessons that we're going through right now and he's really learning to connect with his own copy it's really interesting because he's writing this stuff oh yeah and he's missing the fact that when you're communicating it uh, for voice there's intentions that have to be communicated effectively and even though he's writing it he's missing the fact that hey this is kind of cool Right. Like maybe he's too close to it, you know, exactly. But it's still his job oh, and, sure. he, and he still has to do it effectively. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm helping him make sure that he does that 
and that his bosses are going to be happy with the way that the company is presented because it's not just it's just not a scientific instructional video that's meant to be boring. It's really a lot of the stuff in there is stuff like, hey, this is really cool. We're the only guys that do this. So when you're when you're not communicating that and you're just telling reading the words off the page, obviously it's not really moving anybody. But when you're trying to present these things, let, let's present them in a way that people want to, you know, connect with it emotionally. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> Do you work with any public speakers? Well, uh, I'm not presently mm -hmm. working with public speakers. I'm working with a few podcasters. Okay. One guy who's really into Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Well, and he's he, a guy after my own heart. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he wants to be a better dungeon master. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yes. Because he's been listening to Critical Role and all of, of this. Of course he has. Yes. Right. And my kid, <laughs> oh my gosh, my kids, D, dungeon masters galore. Mm -hmm. These, they're, uh, they're amazing how, how good they are at doing this. Um, it's so, a yes, skill. it absolutely is. So, yeah, I'm working with a dungeon master, which I think That's is awesome. super cool. Uh, <laughs> podcasters. And so, so nobody who's I mean, of course, public speaking has been kind of shut down. So, well, yes, but it is still going on virtually. Yes. So I guess it depends on, um, you know, what they're doing with it. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, I definitely like I said, I consider every all of these people public speakers, but not in the sure. traditional sense. Yeah. That Not in sense. the traditional sense. I'm really hoping that eventually this thing kind of peters out because I don't know about you, but I have had it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's definitely elements of it that I don't like, but I do yeah. have to say, I, as my T-shirt says, and I joke about this all the time, I sit in a dark padded room uh, hearing voices and talking to myself. Yes. Um, and, and I actually have been doing that for a very long time, having been a studio engineer for over 20 years. So quite honestly, I'm well trained for quarantine. Oh, yeah. And, it's the uh, same with me. Yeah. yeah this is... I'm living my best life. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> my introverted self is just like... <sighs> <sighs> yeah. And it's funny because since the world has opened up, I'm finding more and more ways to not leave the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's going to be very many of us who are going to have to get over the social awkwardness, you know, slash uh, social anxiety <laughs> of going back out there again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't really bother me, but, you know, I also just. I love my house. I just love, you know, yeah. I've lived here a very long time. I mm -hmm. just, it's got everything I need and everything I need is nearby or it can be delivered. Yes. Um, I'm in the mountains. Uh, you know, it's just a beautiful day here most of the time. It I, sounds I, beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I just feel so fortunate to live here and it, it has had its drawbacks to live in the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, Career-wise, you know, it has made certain elements of being a voice actor a struggle uh, compared to many other people who are accessible in New York and L.A. and all of that. Now, Although perhaps a little less so now. Less, yeah. I was just going to say, less yeah. so now, though, because mm -hmm. it's so crazy just when COVID hit and quarantine started happening like the home studio business kind of started to boom a little bit. You know, I was getting more calls for that than ever before. I'll bet you were. <laughs> um, you know, people needing their to get equipment set up and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, as long as you have a good environment, it's really a pretty easy thing to do overall. We, it's so much easier now uh, to do than it was even ten years ago, and 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 cheaper in many ways too. So. Uh, equipment wise, people can do this uh, fairly easily. Now it really comes down to talent and uh, the environment that they're in when it comes to how they ultimately sound and whether they'll be able to do all that. But anyway, I think all that was a very long winded way of saying I love where I live. I'm in the mountains of North Carolina. Yeah, I, I just love it here. Like I said, in, in, in any ways, it's been a challenge, but there's also a really great community of uh, people here that are creative and audio people and musicians and, mm -hmm. and tons of voice actors, believe it or not, um, for such a Good small place. Um, 
I used I there's two production studios here. I used to work for one of them. Um, Didn't Peter O'Connell move out there? Uh, Peter O'Connell is in Apex area or Cary, I believe is what okay. they call it. And that's actually about four hours away, more towards Raleigh. Okay. So a little further away. Yeah. I, the I, general I, area. He used to be in Buffalo. So that's right. probably a lot closer to you than. Way closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm actually uh, about an hour east of the Tennessee border. Oh, okay. Okay. So depending on which way you go, mm -hmm. no, if I head north, I can actually hit it a little bit sooner. Um, but if I head directly west, uh, then it's about an hour uh, east of the Tennessee border in the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. Oh, uh, lovely. And uh, yeah, I've lived here a long time. And the best part about it, uh, or the kind of the most interesting part about it actually is my wife and I decided a long time ago when we were moving here, that uh, we didn't want to live in Atlanta anymore. Mm -hmm. We were both really actually making really good money. Um, and just, you know, we're, as I say, dinks, double income, no kids. Sure. Um, and life was really, you know, pretty easy. But we knew that we wanted to start a family, but we didn't want to do that in Atlanta. Um, we wanted to, something smaller and something just a little more simple. So my best friend, uh, who I had worked with in his band way back in Tampa, him okay, and okay, the guy you knew from ninth grade, that's yeah. right. <laughs> okay, him and his wife moved to Asheville a year or two earlier, and we had been coming up to visit, like a lot. I mean, we probably came up ten, fifteen times, you know, easily wow. in a couple of years. And when we decided that one day that we were leaving Atlanta, uh, my wife said to me. I don't care where we go, but we are not, we, I'm done. <laughs> I said, okay. So uh, we started coming up to Asheville and looking for places here. Uh, and we had a hard time. It was, we looked at probably 30 houses. And then as it turns out, uh, another real estate agent in our real estate agent's office was selling their house, which happened to be this house. How convenient is that? I know. Well, <laughs> and that's not even the best part. Oh, okay. There's more. <laughs> so, but wait, there's more. <laughs> that's right, Jody. <laughs> A lot more. Uh, the house is in the same neighborhood as my best friend and his wife. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so that's, that's the first good part. Uh -huh. The next good part is that when I came into the house, I walked downstairs and there was a... Um, just kind of a, a wall of uh, OSB, which is like construction board. And it was just, you know, uh, downstairs. And there was a kind of a flimsy door that was there uh, in the middle. And I opened it up and there was a rehearsal space in there. There was a mixing board and guitars and drums all set up. And I just quietly, wow. sh I quietly shut the door. I walked over to the bottom of the stairs and I shouted up to my wife. I said, honey. We're home. Uh, and needless to say, we bought this house and nice. have lived here ever since. And I've finished out that room and made it into a true studio. And uh, the rest is history. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you definitely would be very happy to be able to work from home, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. That Absolutely. is a great story and really nice that you have found your perfect home. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And uh, the other crazy part of that story is that neither my wife or I had jobs when we came here. We came here with no jobs uh, and just threw caution to the wind uh, as to how it was all going to work out. And really, uh, the last crazy part of that story is that as the moving guys were here moving furniture into the house the truck was literally in the driveway and they're moving stuff in i get a phone call and it was from a local bar in town that said hey our sound man quit can you be here this weekend so i got a job wow. yeah i came here with no job but uh -huh. i of course had been passing out cards and resume paper resumes at the sure time. yeah and uh, as i'm in the driveway and they're moving stuff in i get a call that uh you know, can you be here this weekend? So that was my first job that I got having no job coming into coming here. And wow, it's just a serendipitous story in so many ways. So I sure. love it here. I'll never go anywhere else. This is where I belong. 
Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website and I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while, totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that too. Now, back to the podcast. It sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Along those lines, <laughs> what are you working on now? Because there's got to be like this huge, big difference between that first job and what you're, you know, what, yeah. what's on the horizon at the moment. <laughs> what's on the horizon? Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I really just, you know, want to help as many people as I can uh, get there, get started in this business and get started in the right way. I... It bothers me so much to see companies out there that are taking advantage of people or, mm -hmm. you know, preying on their hopes and dreams. I mean, I have never, ever told anybody that this was easy uh, as being a voice actor. And I've never told them that it was fast. I've always said that, you know, it's a crockpot career. It's not a microwave meal. So we really do have to. Uh, you do have to have patience and persistence and practice and be professional and all that good stuff, right? So that's all very important. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I really love doing uh, is helping people. But I will always and, and do still, uh, you know, commercials. I just did some political stuff uh, recently. I just did uh, a narration for, gosh, what the heck was it? Oh, uh uh, yet it was yesterday or the day before I did a narration for a uh, like an architectural company. Uh, you know, it's, I do radio stations, uh, imaging. I do commercials here. You know, it's just all kinds of stuff. Whatever, whatever comes my way, I'm I'm excited to do that too. And uh, I've done a lot of audio production as well. I a lot of my clients really are coming to me not just for the voice, but to just do the whole thing. That's great. Yeah. 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 So there's no day is the same. No day is the same. It's kind of what I love about this, too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No day is the same. And I get to, you know, uh, spend time or schedule around my kids schedules, which is really well. One of them's in college now. Uh, he's uh, he's kind of. All right. I'm going to I have the platform, so I'm going to brag on my kids for a second. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, I, I actually, you know. All right, this is going to be a little bit of a humble brag because I have to say, like, if if I can turn out kids that are this good, I must be <laughs> able to teach somebody something. My oldest son. That's a little more passive. <laughs> a little more passive? <laughs> yeah, just have to, turning out the kids. <laughs> I just, just, I just have to say, okay. <laughs> just a tiny bit more passive. <laughs> okay. Well, my, my, my oldest son went to uh -huh. high school and his first two years of college simultaneously. Wow. And, okay. And Good genes there. <laughs> uh, oh, well, hold on a second. It's not, I'm not even done yet. Okay. So not only that, uh, so he graduated with his diploma and his associates at the same time. He was valedictorian. He's an Eagle Scout, and he got a scholarship. School sent him money to go. Wow. I know, right? That's pretty good. Yeah. I know. And my younger son, he's a junior in high school. He was, in middle school, he was the top baritone sax player in the state. Wow. Yes. That's talent. He's an incredible musician. Uh. I've been learning how to play guitar in the last year. I have finally dedicated myself to this instrument after spending 50 years of wasting my time not 
doing that. <laughs> um, sure. And uh, he helps me with the, all with that stuff. Like he picks uh, he picks it up so quickly. And there's I'm I'm hoping there's a good chance. I mean, it's not set in stone, but I think there's a very good chance he might be drum major of his marching band, and they happen to be one of the best in the state. As far wow, as marching for bands him. go next year. So, yeah, that'll be his senior year. He also very much a uh, very uh, excellent writer academically. He does very well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, they're great kids. So, hey. You know, if I if I can if I can get them to be that good, I'm sure I can help somebody <laughs> else do something. I'm sure you can. Yeah, <laughs> that is very impressive. I have to say, and good luck to both of them. Because wow, yeah, yeah, they've got a good start. <laughs> yeah, and actually, they did a lot of voice work too when they were younger, when they were kids, and sounded like kids. Now they both sound like yeah. men. I think they both have deeper <laughs> voices than I do. Uh, and uh, yeah, they actually, my youngest son was able to buy a, a, a custom saxophone with his voiceover money from when he was a, a, a young kid and my older son he he's a bit more frugal um, but he has quite a uh, savings account built up from voiceover work that he did when he was younger good for that his first job was uh, being the background singing the ABCs on a car commercial oh so cute it was adorable <laughs> it really was <laughs> Yeah, I know that there are a lot of voiceover parents out there that uh, are having their kids do some stuff to sure. help them pay for things later and then, you know, putting the money aside for them to use later. It's, yeah, I know uh, Rosie uh, Amador, Rosie and Brian do that. They've done that with their kids and their kids actually are in their 20s now and still doing it. Yeah. Um, and uh, Tracy Lindley, her kids are doing that now, too. Yeah. <laughs> I love all those people. They're great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I never really pushed my kids to do it or, you know, like I never said like, hey, you know, I always asked them if they wanted to do it. Yeah. First yeah. of all. Um, and, you know, kind of when they I had there's an age that they all hit. Right. Kind of that preteen teenage age where they all they have is kind of that ennui going. And it's very difficult <laughs> to get them to uh, to kind yeah. of break out of that. Um, so I, I definitely think that, you know, while they're cute and while you have the ability, uh, absolutely. And if they're the type of kids who are really outgoing or have that personality for it, then great. My kids, were they were never excited about it, I wouldn't say. Um you probably a lot because in the studio I always uh, made them be quiet um, when they weren't oh. actually doing the voicing. But yes. it's funny they uh, when they were really little they sometimes would be at work with me in in the bucket you know that we put them in the in the car seat and I just bring them right in and so they knew to be quiet in the studio when I was working with other talent right from the time that they were very young. So I don't know that the studio is quite an ex as an exciting place for them as it was for me. Although ultimately my younger one. He, you know, with the music stuff, he he's yeah. really starting to get into it. So, really wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations to both of them. They they seem to have uh, very bright futures, which is fantastic. You know, their mom is really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she would be to to help raise sons like that. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is awesome because she's the lady who put up with me when I uh, loaded PA systems into our house into our yes. apartment at four in the morning back in yep. the day. Um, you know, if she was able to put up with that, she can pretty much put up with anything. <laughs> what is she doing now? Uh, my wife uh, is in accounting. She okay. act she actually she speaking of amazing people. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm just we'll get such, to know your whole family. <laughs> I know I'm really I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by amazing people. Mm -hmm. And that's no that is no lie. My wife uh, works for a brewery called Wicked Weed and it's here in town uh, and now it's huge. It's like going nationwide and it's just exploded in the last several years it's an amazing company uh they are very good to her she was the human resources director there for uh, quite a while and now wow. she's moved yet yeah, uh that's a very high stress job oh yeah uh, if you don't know uh and so since then she's moved into accounting and she's much uh happier in the quieter environment there i think Less stress yeah yes. I, she never ever <laughs> wants me to talk about her very much but she really <laughs> she deserves some props because she's an she's really an amazing uh, amazing person truly my better half
Well, fantastic. That's what uh, finding your life partner is is all about. Yeah. Yeah. We've been together. Uh, let's see. We met in 1995. So that's mm -hmm. 26 years now. And we were yep. married in 99. So I don't know. That sounds like math, but 22 ish. something. It's a like. long time. Yeah. yeah. It's a dance. <laughs> that's how she responds. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been married? She goes, a long time. A long, yeah. <laughs> My husband the same way. Yeah. It's been actually this August, I think, will be 31 years. Wow. So, isn't, it yeah. isn't it amazing? 32. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've officially known him longer than pretty much anyone in my life except my parents and my sister. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's funny how you start to put these things together now. It's like, oh, wow. I, I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of patterns and connections and things that have happened now. And, and, and I guess that's kind of the wisdom of growing older is really recognizing patterns in life so that when things start to happen again, you can say, ah, uh, I, I know how this is going to turn out because yes. I've seen it before. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's really the only good thing about getting old, I think, because the rest of it is pretty rough, actually. <laughs> yeah. The rest of it can kind of suck. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah. What hurts today? Is, uh, yeah, you know, and my husband says the same thing. Okay, I like moved the wrong way. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Ab about a month ago, I stepped wrong, and I've been to the acupuncturist like six times. I mean, oh and I goodness. cannot get rid of this issue that I'm. Oh wow! In. Yeah, it's bad, and I all okay. I did was step wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. Oh my goodness, get out of the car wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Move your neck wrong. <laughs> uh huh. I, yeah, it, it all really, sorts of stuff. It really started to strike me about probably uh, maybe eight years ago or so. I did a somersault, you know, in the oh, in the living room, and uh -huh. it took me like three weeks to recover from the from the back strain. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. We are getting old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome to this the power discussion. of sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this discussion has really gone into places I did not expect. <laughs> it, it, it's totally. But that's okay. That's right. It's totally devolved. And Jody, I'm always <laughs> glad to take you down a rabbit hole. <laughs> Well, thank you. The rabbit hole is always fun with you. <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> how can people get in touch with you if they'd like to learn more, hire you for voice acting or get a coaching lesson or hire you for audio engineering or any of the many things that you do? <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, so uh, sound, the number four VO is my website go to the blog. The blog is filled with information about voiceover and the audio side of voiceover, the performance side, industry stuff. Uh, I haven't written a lot lately and I do apologize for that, but most of the articles there are things that are still, it's so funny, still work today uh, as they, you know, I, I always try and keep it very um, relevant. Mm -hmm. Um. So the blog you is there. Start a podcast, <laughs> Jody. I couldn't do it better than you. I couldn't do it better I'm than you. Very hard right now. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna throw down that gauntlet. Um. Yeah. Your so, blogs could be a podcast. Is all I'm saying. Oh well. Technically, yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna um. <laughs> I'm going to hit you up for information on that. Okay. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk. All right. <laughs> um, the book, I wrote a book, Sound Advice, voiceover from an audio engineer's perspective. It's mm -hmm. available on my website. Uh, you can also, uh, yeah, go, go grab it from my website there. Uh, I do recommend the paperback version, even though it's the more expensive one, but I've been hearing for years that it's the kind of book that you pull off your shelf, you know, when you recognize it or when you have a problem, whereas the e-version, you'll probably forget you have. I know mm, I do. Yes. Good point. Um, and then of course, through my, you know, everything is really through my website, sound, the number four, vo.com. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to, love to hear from you and love to help you out. 
Great. Well, thank you so much. This has been a really entertaining and interesting conversation. <laughs> awesome. Well, I like to keep it fun. Oh, yeah. And, and we will talk on Clubhouse again. <laughs> yes, very soon. Absolutely. And yes. thank you for having me. It's really an honor. And I, I've just, you know, I've known you, uh, I think, think, pretty long time now and uh, long enough to see, you know, just how uh, far your career has come and everything. So <laughs> I actually, I, I love seeing uh, great people be successful. Well, thank you. You're very and, welcome. And uh, yeah, we will talk again soon. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time.